ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the 2015 Invent Idaho State Finals. At this time, it is my honor and privilege to introduce to you Mr. Nick Smoot, our keynote presentation today, presenter. Mr. Smoot has been an, is an executive at Rohini Company. He founded and sold two startup tech companies. Nick is a member of the Young Entrepreneur Council of the United States. He is also a participant in the Milken Institute, and he is one of their young leaders. Mr. Smoot is also a writer for the Huffington Post, Forbes, and USA Today. And I'd like you to give a warm welcome to Mr. Nick Smoot, inventor of, and owner of the company that makes three printable light. I got to touch it first. Are we good to go with this one? All right. So uh, just a disclaimer, I, I'm not the, the inventor of this, but our, our team is. Um, so I can give some insight around that. I know Beth's really excited about uh, light paper, but before we talk about light paper or inventions or anything else, I want to stop and just give Beth a huge thank you. She does a fantastic <laughs> job. I wish there was stuff like this when I was in elementary school. How many parents out there feel the same way? Who had a ridiculous idea when you were a parent and you're like, I should have pursued it and now I missed out on it? And how many of you have talked to your kids and you're like, I had an idea and this was gonna be the big one? Who in here has done it? Yeah, and you didn't do it. Yep, exactly. That's funny. So before, uh, before we get going, I'll show it to you and then we'll fit it in a little bit later to talk about it more. But I, I am uh, an executive at a company in Coeur d'Alene called Rohini. Uh, we have an office up there and then also in Austin, Texas, and we're working with some really, really magical technology. We joke around, and when we talk to people about it or show it to people, we're like, it's black magic, basically. <laughs> like, when they try and figure out, like, what is it? So this is light. Like, this is the world's thinnest light. It's flexible. Like, it's super weird to think about light this way. Um, and you, you just fire it up. It still needs a power source. So it's not that magical in that capacity, but weirdly, I mean, you can kind of see it there. I mean, imagine that, look at that. I'll let you guys play with it and look at it later, but imagine what you could do if you could draw and turn whatever you drew into light. Like that's what we can do. And we can do it at 35 feet per minute. Uh, it's pretty crazy how this works. So uh, whenever someone tells you something can't be done, that's not true. It's just a matter of when in time will it happen? What is the right environment for it to come together? Could this have happened 30 years ago? No. 20 years ago, probably not. But today, it has happened. It's continuing to happen. So uh, it's a really neat thing in our midst that uh, we'll talk more about. And I'll let you play with it and look at it as you guys are walking around different areas. Um, you know, I, I grew up in Coeur d'Alene. Uh, who else is from the North Idaho? Where are we all from? North Idaho? Who's from like the North Idaho? Idaho. Nah, woo, come on. And who's from like more Southern? Anybody like more in the Southern area? All right. The journey up. What do we define Southern as? Like Moscow? Is that? <laughs> no, I'm just joking. <laughs> who's from Boise area? Excellent. Welcome, guys. Thanks for coming up. This is exciting. I really do. When I, um, when I was talking about the ideas that we've had, I remember being, you know, like third grade. And behind my parents' house, we had this hill in Coeur d'Alene. It was a, what they called a monadnock. It's like a giant stone that the glaciers couldn't move. And so we would go up there with my buddies and explore on this hill and come up with ideas of what we could do up there. And one time we thought, you know, we're in North Idaho. There's a lot of wildlife up here. And as men, we need to provide for our families because we're in third grade. And so we should probably find a way to trap animals on this hill, because that's an invention we need to come up with, because, you know, watch Swiss Family Robinson, different shows like that, it starts getting in your head. We're all inventors, so we're up there digging a hole that's like four inches deep. I don't know if we're trying to twist the ankle of an animal or something, but when we're young, we create, we think, we try. And that's something that over time, it continues to kind of go the different direction. So I want to just tell you all today, 
Stay on your pathway. Stay obsessed. Stay consumed in trying to create and invent. There are a few things that I, uh, I do want to talk through. If you think about your lifetime, for a lot of you in this room, you're what, what's called like a digital native. For the young folks, if you pick up an iPhone or an iPad or an Android, like you know how to run it. You just grab it and you go. It's native to you. It's what you've grown up doing. Now, for your parents and other generations, they're still learning. They at one point had the cutting edge on something. But I remember a man, um, his name is Dan. He's a good friend of mine for many years, older gentleman, I think now in his 90s. And Dan was telling me one day about his dad came up to him and said, Dan, someday we're going to be in front of this storefront window here, and we're going to be watching the World Series on a box. And Dan was looking at his dad thinking, you're crazy. Like this idea, we'll watch it on a box in this window. It'll be in New York, and we're going to be down here in California. And then all of a sudden, this thing called the television came out. And it happened, and Dan and his dad are standing there watching the World Series on a box. Think about the future we're living in now. Who has a, a cell phone with them? I mean, just stick your hands up. Cell phone, yeah. I mean, look, everybody's got cell phones. It's a piece of glass you talk into. How weird would you have been go back like 30 years? Like, I got a piece of glass and just chat away. And then I poke at it. And things happen. Like I can control the lights in my house, and I can turn on the television and off, and I can send a message through the air. Like it just, it's weird if you think about what's going on. But the, here's the thing I want to share with you. It's not slowing down. It's getting faster and faster. We're going to laugh about certain things, but I also want to be very serious today. Because I think it's really important that even the first graders in here, kindergartners, maybe little brothers who are younger, seventh graders, eighth graders, ninth graders, whatever's in this room, that you pay attention to what's going on in our world. When it comes to inventions, it's a scary place at times, too. Think about this. Did you know that dentistry is a, an industry that's endangered? If you're encouraging your kid to be a dentist, be very careful. <laughs> I kid you not. And a lot of people are like, what? They're inventing vaccines to stop cavities right now. They're testing these down in San Francisco. I'm not saying they're the right solution, but think about all the industries that are continuing to change and shift. You have these brilliant minds in here today that are working on so many fascinating things. I, I love one year, I, my wife and I, we uh, lived down in Los Angeles for a while after Coeur d'Alene, and we came back, I've told Beth this story, we came back for a, a holiday, and we were up at the Silver Lake Mall, and we were walking through, and I don't know, maybe even someone in here made it. But as we walked through, we saw this, like, science fair-looking thing. I wasn't sure what it was, but we found out it's this thing called Invent Idaho. And as we're wandering through it, there was this fire-breathing elk that I just thought was the coolest. Immediately took a picture of it, was sending it out on, like, Twitter and Facebook. And people all around the world thought it was the best because, I mean, what a fa imagination to go, I can make a fire-breathing elk. Why not? And the problem they wanted to solve was this, that wolves were eating elk. And so we needed to <laughs> equip the elk with some form of a weapon. And like, it's going to swallow lava, and then it's game on. <laughs> so that's the kind of imagination you need to approach this world, because we're living in a world now where cars drive themselves, where you can poke a piece of glass and all sorts of crazy things happen. You know, I, um, I, I want to encourage you with this as well. I, I've invented some companies and came up with an idea where I have a business partner. He and I will be talking, and next thing you know, we're like, well, what if we did this? Okay, let's try. Try is the key thing there, because when you build things and when you start things from the ground up, my wife has stuck with me through multiple companies, God bless her, because when you build something, it often fails. You'll start something, and it'll crash right in front of you. I remember we started one company that we were going to kind of revolutionize the world of real estate, like how you buy houses, and we're going to use mobile devices to do it. We had sold the product to a bunch of companies, and it didn't even work yet. Like, we're selling this thing, and my partner's back in his office, like, just coding it, trying to build it as we're getting this thing ready to sell. And then we hit the day we're supposed to ship. It's not done. <laughs> we're having to contact all the clients and tell them why it's broke, and then we launch it, and then they all broke it, and then we fixed it. And it was this journey of back and forth, back and forth. At one time, uh, we, we built a social network in airplanes. 
were the first in the world to ever do it. Uh, who's ever heard of uh, you know, Virgin America or Virgin Atlantic? Richard Branson. People heard of Richard Branson. Uh, I've got to meet Richard, and we did some work with his company. And we came up with this idea to help them connect business travelers. Like, what if you landed in a city, and there was a way you could figure out who was in that city, and it would tell your phone? They're like, that's awesome. Let's do it, and we'll help connect business travelers through Virgin. And then they were like, well, what if you could get it to work in the plane? So you could, like, chat from seat to seat through your own phone. We're like, okay, we could, we could try that. Like, why not? Let's experiment. And they're like, well, what about from, like, plane to plane? Like, if there's other people in other planes in the air, and they want them to chat with those, like, okay, we could try. <laughs> sure. And then they're like, well, what if we did from plane to plane and plane to ground? And, like, you could chat from the plane to the ground. We're like, all right, <laughs> we'll give it a go because that's what you do when you're an inventor. My buddy and I were like, uh, let's figure this out. I kid you not. At one point, we were just in a plane, like, for the next two days, flying around from, like, place to place. We'd land and get back on the plane testing. We're, like, trying to chat with other people in other planes. And we went to, like, a special lab where they used to simulate being in an airplane, but it wasn't like being in the real plane. So then we just had to fly. We spent days, like, flying and breaking this thing over and over and over again. And finally, it started working. Elon Musk, who's heard of that guy? Elon Musk, if you don't know who Elon Musk is, he's crazy but the right kind of crazy. This guy, he started a company that was a mapping company before Google Maps, he sold it. And then he started another one called PayPal with some buddies. Decent sized company, sold that. And then he's sitting there with his brother, Kimball, and they're at a coffee shop. And Kimball in here talking, and they go, some guy, a venture capitalist came up and said, hey, hey uh, Elon, what do you want to work on next? He said, well, I think I think I kind of want to do something with like solar power, space travel, and electric cars. That's what I want to do. And those are the things I want to maybe like explore and see if I can build companies. I kid you not, all at the same time, he built Solar City, one of the largest solar companies in the United States. Tesla, which is, if you've heard anything about Tesla now, I mean, they're just taking the world by storm with some cool things. I got to drive one of their cars last week. 691 horsepower electric car, as, as any of the adults in this room, who imagined that would have ever been possible? I did not. It was like being in a roller coaster. And then SpaceX. SpaceX, they're going to Mars. He's trying to figure out how to make a colony on Mars. And they're trying to figure out space travel and privatizing it. It's incredible. But yet, even with Elon Musk, you see all the articles about him? It's like, oh, Elon's the man. He's going to change the world. His brother Kimball just invests in the companies now. And once I was at a small meeting with those guys and a few other people, and they were talking about SpaceX. And Kimball said, well, for the longest time, I thought I'd just cut a huge check to be a part of a giant fireworks show. We would just blow things up. <laughs> Rockets would go in the air, and they'd explode over and over and over again. So don't think that your inventions won't come up against problems. Who in the room had a problem with what they're building? Who got really angry? Anybody? Yeah. I want to break things. Who broke anything? Anybody break things? All right. There we go. Some real anger issues in the room. <laughs> You'll work through that. It's called emotional control. It comes later in life. Teenage years, it's going to get real bad, though. Here's what I want to say, though. You think about the world we're in. What's coming next? We don't know, really. We truly don't know. By the time you're out of high school, we don't know what the workforce is going to look like. We don't know what the next big invention is going to be. None of us could feel the wind and say, here's what we think it's going to be. It could be something in this room. You could be the next big inventor or invention. But what I will say is, when it comes to your pathway of trying to figure out what you want to be, who thinks they know what they want to be yet? Who has no idea what they want to be when they're old? Adults as well. <laughs> It happens. You're always on this journey to figure things out. But what I will say, and this is where I want to get a little bit serious for a second. The big universities right now have all these estimates. The big colleges, big data centers, they're, they're guessing between 35 and 45 percent of occupations right now that we know of in the United States will be gone in the next 20 years. gone. And I will say this, you cannot just walk blindly through the school system trusting they're going to lead you into what's next. I think education is fantastic. 
I think every single one of you should be obsessed with knowledge and learning. And you should be chasing professors around, your school teachers, and asking questions to where they just, you're like, stop asking questions. Because the world we're heading into is scary. What happens if 45% of the workforce and occupations change? With self-driving cars, we're going to get rid of, they're estimating, I can't remember how many billions of dollars the industry is just going to go away from. If cars drive themselves, what happens? Trucking, taxis, valet service, think of that one. Parking lots, parking lots, they don't even exist anymore. They're going to become like wait, cars will wait. Think about that. You'll just check in, your car will come get you. It could be tooling around town while it's waiting for you. Saying hi to the other cars, like blinking a headlight, like, what's up? Like, who knows what they're going to do? But what I do know is the world's coming fast, but it is going to release trillions of dollars that are normally spent on cars that we won't have to spend on cars anymore. What's going to happen with that money that we have? Who knows what they're going to invest in your crazy idea because they think we need that. We need fire-breathing elk. And they're going to, here's a check, 100 grand, go build it. Figure it out. But that's the exciting world we're going into. What I will say is, as you guys are becoming obsessed with education, you should specialize. And when I use the word specialize, what I mean by that is very, very specific. You need to be obsessed with something that you can become the best in the world at. Do your best to understand what that means. If you like baseball, who likes baseball in here? In the future, I'm saying specialize to where not only do you like baseball, but you like swinging the bat when the sun is like right here and you hit it at this time of day and you can hit it the furthest out of anybody else in the world because you specialize in that moment. And for the parents who are hearing me, this is important. We need specialists in the future where we're going because just being standard isn't going to be enough when 45% of jobs go away. We need people who can hit that ball at that time of day and they hit it better than anybody else in the world. And that's the person, companies will go, we need that person. Specialize. That's one thing that's important. Mentors. Who has a mentor that's young in the room? Little people. Under, under 18. Who has a mentor that they say, I have a mentor? Good. Okay. For those of you who don't, let me explain what a mentor is. You ready? It's someone that's really, really smart that you look up to and you're like, they're awesome. And they've done really neat things in what I want to do in life. If you want to be a doctor, do you have a doctor? If you want to be a doctor and you've got a family doctor, you should, next time he's banging on your knee or looking in your ear for bugs, you need to just tell him, would you be my mentor? And just, like, put him on the spot when he's just looking in your ear. And then he's going to go, um, well, let's talk about that. And then just say, I just want to ask you questions from time to time to learn about being a doctor because I want to be like you. And then he's going to melt and just be like, whatever you need, <laughs> I'll send you to med school. <laughs> But I, I will say this, mentors are important because we used to live in a society where everyone just kind of lived on small towns and villages. The Industrial Revolution hit. We got big factories and big cities, and everyone got busy, and we kind of lost that mentoring model. Parents had to work more because, man, we had more stuff to produce. There was more money, so people bought more. And, man, if we got more money, we got to buy more stuff because that's just how the world works. And then we lost that mentorship model. So it's really important. Use your parents as mentors. Learn from them. They're a lot smarter than you think. And you'll think they get worse in your teenage years, but trust me, they're still as smart or better. Other thing I want to share, passion. I, I'll tell you something that breaks my heart. You know, the other night, my wife and I, or just t t yesterday, we were at um, a restaurant here talking to a college student. I said, hey, you know, what do you want to do with, with your degree? They're like, oh, I love this. Uh, and they're saying, like, what they, they love about their degree. I was like, well, what do you want to do with it? Like, whatever company is going to take me as an intern, I'm probably just going to go work there. I was like, eh. <laughs> like, I'll say this. It's not bad working for big companies, but just this idea of I'm just going to jump into the, the, the wind and let the wind carry me can be a scary place. You should have something, when I said obsessed with, a passion that, that makes you on fire, something you love so much you just think about it all the time. Because then what happens is you'll just keep learning about it, and no one's even paying you to learn about it. And you're going to go online and learn about it. Hey, who's ever become excited about something that you just started researching on, online? Who got excited about their project? Passionate about it. That's what you need to find. And if you weren't, that's okay. It was just for this project. But find what you love and become passionate about it. 
I want to show a video that I really like, and, and we'll end with this video. I think, Beth, are, are we about that time? About five minutes still? Perfect. The video will be a perfect ending. I want to, I, I think we are showing a video, yes? Is there a screen? Is there a screen already up? Am I missing it? Oh, there they are. I'm on it. <laughs> okay. We're going to show this video, and it's about a young man named Jack Andraka. Jack, I've had the privilege to meet Jack, and he found something he was passionate about. I'm going to let him tell his story, but he found problems. He bumped up against people who said, you can't do this. You're not worth my time. And yet he pushed through and came up with a solution that has challenged the whole world of the medical industry, dealing with cancers. It's a great video. I want you to watch this and understand this is a young man like you. He's a little bit older now, but when he was in, I think it was just early high school, he came up with this invention. So watch this, and I'll have one more thing to say. And then, Beth, are you coming up next? Perfect. There you are. Perfect. Go ahead. The winner of the $75,000 2012 Work E. Moore Award in the category of Medicine and Maybe if we caught it earlier. That's what the doctor said about my uncle's pancreatic cancer. Like that was even possible with the testing they had. But what did I know? I was too young to understand things like cancer or how to test for it. Too young to be taken seriously. One hundred and ninety-nine experts told me I was too young, that they didn't have time for my little science fair project. But the way I saw it, if the key was early detection, maybe someone just needed to start looking earlier. Like during fifth period freshman biology. I know they had their little bit about intel in there, forget about that. What I will say, this kid's 15 and revolutionized how we detect cancer. Don't let anybody tell you you're foolish. Be foolish, be crazy, be, just be nuts and passionate about what you're into. And who knows what you're gonna invent, who knows how you're gonna change the world. And go for it, worst case scenario, you fail, try again. We need people who are crazy. We need less people who are just cruising through life, just doing their job. I want crazy people doing their job. If you end up being a cab driver, be a cab driver, but be crazy when you're off hours. Be obsessed and keep trying to invent, keep trying to think, keep trying to solve problems, and drive that cab better than anybody else in the world. And then maybe you invent something like Uber or printed light or whatever else. But keep inventing, stay a part of this program, get everybody in your school involved in this program, continue to support this if you're a parent who can, I know Beth and their team need more support day in, day out, and this is something that's worth it. So huge hand for Beth, Invent Idaho, and for yourselves. Thank you so much. You are amazing. Stay here a second. Oh, thank you. you. Uh, you know, um, I can, I'll, uh, I'll just, I'll hang out in the back, um, just like one of the other little booths I can go to. Uh, really could last five minutes anyway. Perfect. Let's give Mr. Smoot another huge round of applause. He is amazing. I knew that. But you were awesome. Better than I could possibly imagine. Thank you. And we're going to take a five-minute break. 
And Mr. Smoot, Nick will be in the back if you would like to touch the principal light. I think he might let you touch it. You will be one of the first in the world. I got to touch it a little while ago. And isn't he amazing? I, he's a leader. Follow him. Ask him if he'll be your mentor. He's my mentor now. So ladies and gentlemen, we're going to take, hang on, a five minute break. I need every child to stand up and get the wiggles out now. And if you are from Spirit Lake, Rastrum, or Post Falls, Young Inventors, we have a photographer that would like to meet you up here by the blue uh, Time Warner cable table and take some pictures. So Spirit Lake, Rastrum, Post Falls, Young Inventors, come up here, and they're going to grab a couple of you, starting again in five minutes. Mr. Radical Rick, where are you? Ladies and gentlemen, we'll begin in about four minutes. 
So everybody get the wiggles out and we'll be ready to start. All righty, ladies and gentlemen, if you will please take your seats, shake a few hands with Mr. Smood and with Disco Tech. Let's give Disco Tech the robot and Mr. Ken Zakin from Discover Technology a huge round of applause. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my honor and privilege to welcome you to the award ceremony 
of the 2015 Invent Idaho State Finals. Let's give all the young inventors a huge round of applause. Now, young inventors, let's give your parents a huge round of applause because without their help, you would not be here. I'd like to remind you all that every young inventor here is already a winner. You made it through regionals. You made it to state. Whether you walk across this stage or not today, every one of you is a winner if in your mind you believe you can succeed. So I want you to reach around, young inventors. Give yourselves a pat on the back right now because you deserve it. And a quick reminder that we are here today as a celebration of creativity. This celebration of creativity, we're in the celebration, celebration, we're teaching the inventive thinking process and trying to inspire, ignite, and invent these creative problem solvers. We're hoping that they will be problem solvers for life. It's not just about the ribbons and the awards and the plaques today. It's about the process. So I hope you've enjoyed your journey because everything that has led up to here, to this moment today, that's the important part. This is just the icing on the cake. So I'm glad you're all here. Thank you so many of you that drove this distance to get to this beautiful facility. Let's give the University of Idaho and all their helpers here a huge round of applause for this beautiful facility. If you worked as part of a team, Young Inventors, take a moment if you haven't done so already and double check with your partners, with the team members, to make sure who gets which award because we give the awards to the project and I just want to make sure that you all have figured out if you get a ribbon, rock, paper, scissors, see who gets to keep that and you can always order others. You can see me later if you would like to talk about that. A quick note to parents, attention to the parents about uh, the fact that patent law has recently changed in the last couple of years. If you are considering seeking a patent, you might want to look at a, uh, it's a, a, a short interim patent that you can protect. It's very inexpensive so that you can protect your child's invention during the process and when it's on public exhibition like this. It's now literally a race to the patent office. So if you have any thoughts, take a look at a provisional application. That'll give you some protection. Once again, this is about the process. But we are here as a celebration. Parents, if any of you have amazing photos that you've taken of your child and their invention today, we would love to invite you to post those photos on our brand new Invent Idaho Facebook page, and that's called Invent Idaho Today. Thanks to bashful Dan Young, he's created an amazing Facebook page for us. So please post to your heart's content. I would be, I, I, I respect this country that we live in, and I would appreciate if you'd be willing to stand and join me in a Pledge of Allegiance. This country gave us the freedom to be these inventors that we are. So if you would join me, that would be great. Thank you. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. We all need to thank our amazing sponsors. So I'd like to take a moment to tell them how grateful I am and hopefully that you are to, um, th for their support. If you are interested in becoming a sponsor for Invent Idaho or the National iCubed Corporation, we would be honored to have you. But a huge thank you because we cannot run an event of this magnitude without amazing sponsors and volunteers. So I'd like to thank Best Western University Inn, Intermax Networks, U.S. Bank, Lukens and Annis Attorneys, Randall and Danskin Attorneys, who provide our patent search, a free patent search to our Best of Show winner, the Bird Aviation Museum and Invention Center, 
the Inventors Association of Idaho, and Discover Technology, who provided these great science kits and EV3 robotics kits for the best of show, and the little bit science kits for best of category, as well as Time Warner Cable, who provided the medals and our, our, their, their amazing sponsor. Fig Pickles Toy Emporium from Coeur d'Alene, Brett and Susan Summer are here, and they are special, special awards for gadgets and games. Fred Meyer, who if you have a Fred Meyer account, you'll be able to go on, if you have a card, you can get points for Invent Idaho. A raft from Power, and once again, Mr. Nick Smoot from Rohini, Mr. Ken Zakin from Discover Technology, and Mr. Radical Rick that I'll introduce in a few moments from KHQ TV, as well as the University of Idaho for this beautiful facility. Give them a round of applause. So where do we go from here? Inventors and parents always want to know what is, what's the next step? What if we win? If you attended Jessica's presentation, you'll know that you might be able to enter student ideas for a better America. You're all winners, as I said, just for making it this far, but we have a brand new exciting opportunity for working models as well as for some of the games and other inventions. You can email me if you have questions about Kid Mogul's Television. There's a new TV show coming on Lifetime Television, and it's going to be all about young inventors and kid moguls. So check it out, and they're looking for young inventors to audition. Uh, parents, you know it looks really, really good. If you can put on a college application that my child received their first college scholarship when they were at Invent Idaho in elementary school or middle school. It looks really good if they can say, ever since I was in first grade, I wanted to be an inventor. So if you um, are interested, check out Student Ideas for a Better America, 3M Young Scientists, or Kid Moguls. You can chat with me more about that afterwards if you'd be interested. But in addition, we have a brand new national I-Cubed Challenge program. This is an online national competition with an annual theme. The 2015, right now, theme is special needs. There are flyers out on the front table. If you are interested in entering, you can check it out at iCubedUSA.org. And it's right up on the banner. And I would like to introduce Mr. Lash Laker, who was the 2014 national I cubed challenge winner. Lash will be handing out the medals today. So give Lash a round of applause. <laughs> every person, every young inventor today that wins a ribbon or a plaque, best of show, best of category, you are invited to come to the Capitol Building in Boise, Idaho next Monday. So all of you Boise people that are here, check this out, to meet our legislators and to show off your inventions. So it, you will get a flyer about that when you come up. It is free to the first 25 of you that register online and there's uh, at the Invent Idaho website. So state winners here today, the first 25. We have a brand new high school division. And so I invite you to spread the word so we can get lots and lots of high school entries from grades 9 through 12 to enter next year. Eighth graders, you thought you were done. Mm -mm. You can still get to enter in Vent, Idaho. At this time, I'd like to introduce our VIP today. This is President Staben, the president of the University of Idaho, and we're honored to have him here. He'd like to say a few words and join us. Thank you. Thank you, Beth, and thanks to everyone who came today. Uh, this is actually my second in Van Idaho. It's, I just finished my first full year as president, and this is one of the first events that I did as president, and it's a great event, and I'm, I'm just so pleased to be here. I also want all the students in the audience to think, you know, these things, Elon Musk isn't from Idaho, but are there people from Idaho who have really done these kinds of things? Anybody watch television in this room? 
Yeah, a few people do. I do. So, you know, Philo Farnsworth grew up in Rigby, Idaho. Then he's widely credited as the person who invented television. Um, uh, Mr. Smoot mentioned SpaceX. I don't know if any of you have looked at that. They're, they're going to revolutionize, I believe, space travel. They're, they're going to do that by making a reusable rocket. Rockets are the only form of transportation where you take the vehicle, you use it once, and you throw it away, right? Nobody does that with their car. So, uh, so who's, who's employee number one in SpaceX? Who's really the person who designed the rocket motors that are putting things up in, in space for NASA right now? Tom Mueller from St. Mary's, Idaho is employee number one. He does happen to be a graduate of the University of Idaho as well. So we're pretty, we're pretty proud of him, and we're pretty proud of all of you for being here today. Yeah, let's give him a round of applause. So just remember that you can pursue your dreams, and, and, and remember that the University of Idaho is a place that can help you do that. Parents, families, students, volunteers, teachers, thanks for coming. And feel free to explore our campus after the event. We'd love to have you. It's a beautiful day. It's always a beautiful day at the University of Idaho. And thanks very much. And it is a lovely facility. We are now to the part that I know you've been waiting for. We will have first, second, and third place ribbons in all categories, all five categories in age division. There will also be best of show and best of category, so as well as a people's choice. And I have the privilege of introducing our MC for this year, our host and master of ceremonies. This is Radical Rick from KHQ Television, and I'd like to tell you a little bit about Radical Rick. You're going to have fun today. I think he might explode a few things. Radical Rick has provided hands-on science programs to children in the Inland Empire since September 2000. After working at Hewitt Packard for 20 years, Rick realized that it was time to do something that he really enjoyed, working with kids, making slime, shooting off rockets, and most importantly, blowing stuff up. How many of you kids like to do that? Do it safely. No, seriously, he loves blowing stuff up. It should be noted that safety is top priority. While Rick enjoys introducing children to the incredible world around us through fun and exciting science demonstrations, his number one rule is always safety first. Rick is the owner of Extreme Science. Extreme Science provides hands-on after-school science programs to local elementary students as well as in-class field trips and, according to many principals and students, the best assemblies ever. Radical Rick is also offers birthday parties, entertainment, and fun stations for your corporate events as well as shows for local libraries for their summer reading programs and ministry shows for church groups. And beginning this year, Extreme Science will also begin offering week-long summer camps. You can see Radical Rick almost every Saturday morning on KHQ Channel 6 television out of Spokane on their morning news broadcast. Radical Rick provides a demonstration each week that is, des is designed to get kids interested in science by showing them some simple and fun experiments that they can do at home. Too many of the science shows on television today start off and end with, don't try this at home. As Benjamin Franklin once said, tell me and I forget. Teach me and I remember. Involve me and I learn. Rick is, spreading, is spending his life involving our children in hopes that they will gain confidence, a confidence that will stay with them a lifetime, a confidence that will encourage them to make every day a learning experience. Please give a warm round of applause to Radical Rick, our host and MC for today. You are awesome. Thank you. Thank you, and thank you for having me here. And as she said there, um, my goal is to inspire kids and build that confidence in them. And it was so encouraging to hear all of this uh, over the last half an hour and stuff, especially Nick's speech. And um, it kind of reminded me of, uh, well, when I was talking to some of the kids beforehand, um, some of them were a little bit nervous. And it's like, I can relate to that. I'm really nervous right now. I've never done this before. I've never emceed anything before. And I was thinking about that and how 
my goal is to encourage kids. And kids, I remember when I was in the second grade, and at that point, I wanted to be a weatherman. That was my goal. I was like, it would be so cool to be a weatherman. And our classroom, uh, every morning the kids, we would take turns and one kid would get up and they would read out of the newspaper the forecast for the day. And I was so excited when it was my turn because this is what I wanted to do. And I was like, oh, this is so cool. And I get up there and I start reading and I said, the high today is 36 and the low of 53. And all of the kids started laughing because I got them mixed up. And I was devastated. And when I think back about that, and that's, I think, what was making me nervous about MCN today. I can get up in front of 400 kids and 800 adults and do a science show, and it doesn't bother me a bit. But to sit here and read this, I'm sitting there thinking, I'm going to mess something up. But you know what? That's okay. That's what life is all about. We do mess things up. We make mistakes. But all of those mistakes is where we should learn. Okay? We use those to learn. I heard something a while back said, fail forward. And I thought that was so cool. And so ever since then, that's what I try to remember. I'm going to fail, but I'm going to move forward afterwards. It's not going to stop me. It's not going to define me. I'm going to move forward. So that's what I want to say to you kids is just to encourage you. And I know you're like, come on, Rick. Let's get to the awards. So without further ado, we're going to get to the awards. And um, as she said, we are going to do some explosions and a little bit of stuff. You guys want to blow some stuff up today? Yeah. Awesome. Well, I do have some experiments that we're going to do in between. And let's start off. Oh, there went that balloon. Luckily. Oh, go, go for it. Oh, I don't need to repair it, but go ahead. And he said, fail forward. I did fail to introduce our wonderful uh, Scarlett Randall is the regional coordinator for southwestern Idaho, Boise area. And give her a round of applause. And Debbie Cochran is the regional coordinator for southeastern Idaho. That's the Blackfoot area. Give her a round of applause. Unfortunately, our, my co-founder, Diane Garmeyer, is not here today, but we would like to celebrate all teachers. And if I may borrow Lash for just a moment, we're going to draw two teachers' names. If you have this teacher, uh, if this is your teacher, would you come up and get a special award for them? Miss Snyder from Stoddard in Blackfoot. Is any, any student here from Miss Snyder's class? Come on up. <laughs> Thanks to Lego Education for their donation. Mrs. Stitt, I believe this is Lisa Stitt, are you here? Okay, do we have a student or the teacher? Come on up. Is, is Mrs. Stitt here too? Come on up, you can't hide. She's gonna, they're both going to demonstrate how you all are going to come up. You're going to enter from this side when you win an award, and you're going to exit the other side and shake President Staben's hand. Now I will turn it back over to Radical Rick. And he's going to talk about Special Judges Award. So as I said, we are going to do some fun experiments here. And let's start off with this one here. Uh, well, some of these experiments, some experiments I want to encourage you guys to do at home. Some experiments we don't want to encourage you guys to do at home. Now, like this one here, how many of you guys have inhaled helium before? Yeah. And helium makes your voice go up. Well, this one... <coughs> 
I'm going to fix one a little bit better because this is actually sulfur hexafluoride gas. Now, sulfur hexafluoride gas is actually six times heavier than air. Helium is six times lighter than air, so it makes your voice a little bit higher. SF6, or sulfur hexafluoride, since it is so heavy, it makes your voice a lot deeper. Now i got to deep, breathe deep. Try to get all that out of my bottom of my lungs because it's so heavy. Every now and then my voice may drop back down, and that's because of the gas in there. Okay, I'm not going. Okay, <laughs> okay. So we are going to start off with these special judges awards and the special needs invention, and we have number 105, Garrett Hoyt for his DNA reconstructor robot. Sustainability invention. We have Cannon Parsons, the reusable display board from Garwood Elementary. Environmental inv invention. We have, and I apologize if I mess up your name. Okay, Myra Singh uh, for the ocean cleaner from Hawthorne. We have the safety invention, number 45, Logan Lamb for the GLO fire sprinkler. <laughs> the most artistic, number 29, Drew Meyer, fire and ice. There, we got some hustle. Good job. <laughs> Best journal research. We have number 38, Audrey Sinopete. It's for the seat belt watcher. We have high school, new division this year, Invent Idaho State Finals, high school champion 2015, number 24, Joe Broder, hydrogen gasifier, North Idaho STEM <laughs> Charter Academy. Make sure and check this one out in the common area near the elevator. So now we're going to go to gadgets and games, and these are the third place winners. So for the third, third place, grades one and two, we have Adeline Smith, Swim to Win from Sorensen Magnet School of the Arts and Humanities. Okay. I'm going to try. <laughs> Again, for gadgets and games, third place, grades three and four. We have Brady Hanna for Skeleton Iden Island from Garwood.
grades five and six, third place, Noah Buttekofer and Avian Martinez for Fitness Hero from IT Stoddard Gifted and Talented Program. Third place for grade seven and eight, Derek Blake for the War of Gods, North Idaho STEM Charter Academy. Oh, and he is accepting on Derek's behalf because Derek's not here. This way. <laughs> walking, we're walking. There we go. <laughs> So again, in gadgets and games, we're going to move to the second place winners. And we have for grades one and two, Annika Nelson, the Rat Cracker from Roosevelt. Second place, grades three and four, Quinn and Aurora Rutherford for the Owl Rescue from Fernand Elementary. And we have, again for second place, grades five and six, Isaac Jepson. What kind of soldier are you from Amity? <laughs> nice, there we go, I like that. Okay, again for second place, grades seven and eight, David Breaky and Liam McCoy for the Path of the Warrior, Force Bird Charter Academy. <laughs> nice job, I like that. See, that's why I wear a lab coat, I don't have to wear a <laughs> so now we're going to first place for gadgets and games, grades one and two, Anna, Annalie Terzuli for the Spiral Island from Hayden Meadows. Grades three and four, we have Adelaide Parsons for the commotion in the ocean from Garwood. <laughs> See, there's a hustle. That's the way you do it. Grades five and six, Kaya Sherman, Ocean Paradise from Ram Ramsey Magnet School of Science. Grades seven and eight, with Drew Meyer, 
for Fire and Ice from Forest Bird Charter School. Now we have the best of category. This is a plaque for Chase Crawford for magnet, Magnetage. I'm not sure how to pronounce that one. See, I knew I'd mess one of them up. From Magnetage, Sienna. <laughs> Accepting on behalf of Chase. All right, so I'm not going to accept it. Thank you. And then at this point, are they doing this one? Okay. So owners from uh, Big Pickles, Brett and Susan Summer. Come on up and we'll let you do this one here. Thank you. Thank you. We want to thank Beth again. This is our third year, and this is such a blast to come here it. and do this. And congratulations to all the games people because, you know, a few years ago, there was just a couple little weeny things over there. And now there's just this great array of really creative, incredible toys. So we have a great future in games for our toy yeah. store. We're excited. Okay. So no. uh, we have a special award that we give every year. Um, and our, our criteria for this award is, you know, we know a little bit about games. Um, we go to the New York Toy Fair and the German Toy Fair, and there'll be two square miles of this with booths of people. And we learn to play lots of games and we see original games. So we'd like to give an award to the person who we feel has the most marketable game right now. We um, know a couple companies that would modify a game over there. They would run with it next week so and it's very malleable the game that we chose um, can be used in a lot of different ways or marketed a lot of different ways so and so a lot of thought went in this a lot of talent um, and it, it's a great game in fact I think you know we ought to talk about maybe how we can get it to market so we'd like to give this award to the creator of fitness hero So we're gonna have a we're gonna be sending a game package to you folks. So from Fig Pickle. So thank you very much. So the next category is adaptations. Before we do that, let's do a little bit of science here.
gloves because like I say it is negative 115 degrees so you do not want to touch it okay let's move on to adaptations we have the third place winners and we're gonna start off with grades one and two we have Ryan Nichols for the super duper door unlocker from Hemingway come on up On accepting on behalf. Good job. Grades three and four, we have Amelia Garinge. Garinge? Not sure. I'm sorry. Garinge. For hide and sneak. Hide and sneak from or Hawthorne. Grades five and six, we have Chloe Collins for the instant cocoa spoons from Atlas. Come on up. So adaptation second place winners, grades one and two, Alina Chavez Miranda for Buckle Buddy from Roosevelt. For grades three and four, we have Elsa Coulomb for the No Fall Toddler Safety Bed from Collister. For grades five and six, we have Amy Corrette for the edible bug spray from Hayden Meadows. Now for adaptations, first place from Roosevelt, we have Danica Haggett for the Super Brush. There she is. Okay, grades three and four, first place for adaptations. Brady Harbison from Highlands for the easy ski and school backpack. And grades five and six, first place for adaptations, we have Nora Parker for the wheelchair ramp chain for STEM Charter Academy.
grades seven and eight, first place for adaptations, we have Riley Rasmussen from Coeur d'Alene Charter Academy for the Blood Sugar Watch. <laughs> Accepting on behalf. Thank you. Best of category for adaptations, we have Logan Lamb for the GLO Fire Sprinkler from Mullen Trail. We can do another one, and I will take the microphone with me this time. Okay, so how many of you guys have ever used, made a marshmallow shooter? Very cool. Marshmallow shooters are really cool. We can actually use something as simple as a PVC pipe like this. You know, put the miniature marshmallow in there. It's a half-inch PVC pipe. Take a deep breath, put your mouth on there, and you blow, and all of that pressure is going to force the marshmallow out just like this. And you can see it goes quite a ways. You can actually get really creative and make a marshmallow shooter like this. So this is my style of marshmallow shooter. And this one works just as well. Awesome. But you know what? That still wasn't good enough because I wanted to shoot a big marshmallow. And I thought, to shoot a big marshmallow, you're going to need a lot of air to move that thing. And I probably don't have enough air in my lungs or enough power in my lungs to force that thing very far. So, I went ahead and made this marshmallow shooter. And you can see I'm pumping it up here. Because this has, so hard to do with a handheld mic, sorry. This has a sprinkler valve on it. So now all that air is trapped down there. We've got 60 pounds of pressure down in there. We can drop the marshmallow in there. And we can fire it off in three, two, one. Nice. <laughs> Why not? Is it okay, sir? <laughs> now I ask. <laughs> Check this out. If you fill this up, normally at the birthday parties, the outdoor birthday parties, I use this. We'll shoot the marshmallow way up in the air, and then I'll fill it up with water, and we'll shoot water all over the place. But I'm not going to shoot water in here. We're just going to fill it up with mini marshmallows. Now, if you end up with one of these marshmallows, do not eat it. It's been in my kit. Uh, you never know what other chemicals it may have come in contact with. So, you're not going to eat it, and we're going to do it in three, two, one. <laughs> See how much fun science is? That's the only reason I agreed to do this, because they're going to let me do stuff like this. <laughs> no, actually, it is an honor to be here. We're going to move now on to the Jules Verne. In third place for grades one and two, we have Zane Laker for the Super Vitafruit 3000 from Ramsey Science Magnet. <laughs> There's some excitement. Good job. Awesome. Way to hustle up here. Good job. There we go. <laughs> okay. We have grades three and four. Benjamin Bartlett for the cognitive Im imaging device from Hayden Spring Hidden Springs Elementary. Again, third place, grades five and six. We have Lacey Hong and Lexi Parsons for the No Breaky Leggy from Stoddard. So we have grades seven and eight, 
Rocco Sherman and Sam Olson for the Soul Searcher from Forest Bird Charter School. Again for Jules Verne, second place winners now, grades one and two. We have Alicia Foster, the dolphin communicator from Dar Garwood. <laughs> Again, second place winner in Jules Verne, grades three and four. Michelle Olson and Victoria Goodwin for Clarity Cliff from Hayden Meadows. <laughs> Look at those smiles. <laughs> Grades five and six. Danica Noick and Sierra Holt for the Trash to Nature from Winton. <laughs> and grades seven and eight. Again, the second place for Jules Verne, grade seven and eight, Micaiah Preston for virtual driving, yeah. homeschool. Yeah. Let's move on to first place for Jules Verne. Grades one and two, Sarah Lidecker for the Dream Hat from Hemingway. I think this is an accepting on behalf. <laughs> Didn't look like a Sarah to me. You never know, you parents can get pretty creative with your names. Okay. <laughs> Grades three and four, first place, Bryn Johnson for the Dream Catcher from Hayden Meadows. Grades five and six, first place, Ellery Dobbins, for the allergy relief drink from Hayden Meadows. Grades seven and eight for first place, Jules Verne. We have Garrett Hoyt and Rosa Fossilman, the DNA reconstructor robot from Forest M. Bird Charter School. Now we have the best of category. Uh, from Collister School, we have Alekia Hanakella uh, from, for the invention of Y. Russell. Okay, we're moving on to non-working models, so I think it's time to blow something up, right? Okay, so 
Again, safety is always, always number one. I know some of you kids were up here when I was first setting up and I was mixing some stuff up in some beakers here and, or some flasks here and we put some balloons on there and the kids were like, ah, oh, the balloon's blown up. And we were talking about it and how that thing gets hot. It's actually an exothermic chemical reaction that's going on in there and it is creating a gas. Now this one is creating hydrogen gas. Let me get the torch turned on here. Hydrogen gas is extremely flammable. So we have one balloon here with hydrogen gas in it. And if I put that in front of the torch, it will make a nice fireball. If you're afraid of loud noises, plug your ears. When you plug your ears, don't put your fingers in your ears like this because you might jump and poke your brain and we don't want that happening, okay? Okay, so here we go in three, two, one. So that was pretty good, but extreme science, we like to go big. So I made another one here. This one actually has a hose that goes over to this coffee can. This coffee can has a piezo switch in it so I can push the button to ignite the gas in there. I've got a switch here. I'm gonna push this button. As I push this, some of that gas is now going from that balloon into the coffee can. When I do this one, I don't want too much of the gas in there. Otherwise, it will not ignite because we have to have a good mixture of oxygen and gas. And so this one is going to be even louder in three, two, one. <laughs> nice. That's one of my favorites. <laughs> okay. Parents, those of you that are panicking because you're not getting photo ops up here, you are welcome to come up afterwards and take photos here by the, the sign and the flag and so on. And we will have an ice cream social out in the lobby right afterwards. And I'll have a few more. Oh, and if you want your judging forms, you can form some lines out there a little bit later. Back to Radical Rick. Give him a round of applause. Thank you. So now we're on non-working models. Third place. Grades one and two, Mackenzie Giles for all-purpose picker-upper from Hemingway. <laughs> Step beyond the box. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> Grades three and four, we have Noah Cook for the snout protector from Ponderosa. Third place, grades five and six. Bailey Bauer for Ellertech from North Idaho STEM Charter. <laughs> grades seven and eight, third place. Zachariah Preston for Spin Magnet Generator, homeschool. Here he comes. That's the way we like it, running all the way up here. Nice. <laughs> That's the excitement we're looking for. Cool. And he doesn't even stop. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Grades five and six. Oh, wait. I just did grades five and six, wasn't that? Yes, Alex, uh, oh wait, no, that was seven and eight. I forgot to take the page off, no wonder. Okay, so we're moving on now to second place non-working models, grades one and two. Garrett Kennedy, the dictionary pencil from Cynthia Mann School. Grades three and four, Connor Unruh from Flat and Fast from Sorensen. Unruh. Sorry, that's Connor Unruh.
grades five and six. Daphne Carroll, her heartbeat check from North Idaho STEM. Grades seven and eight, Jules Van Heren in interactive dog collar from Vision Charter School. <laughs> Moving on to first place for non-working models. Grades one and two, we have Tana Show, the deaf mic from Mullen Trail. <laughs> Grades three and four, Gus Hickman, the easy for me chin strap from White Pine. Grades five and six, we have Amber Price for the Happy Trooper Pooper Scooper. I like that one for Mountain View. <laughs> and grades seven and eight, we have Maggie Hurst and Jamie Lynn Kelly for the. Dis Disease Detector from Coeur d'Alene Charter Academy. <laughs> For the best of category, Zoe Kyler from the Meltaway Rings from Forest Bird Charter Academy. Moving on to working models, third place, grades one and two, Madeline Andres for Rabbit Walking Board from North Idaho STEM Charter. Third place, grades three and four, Joey Hike for the slide on temple sleeve from Dalton. And grades five and six, Audrey Sinipeet for Seatbelt Watcher, Desert Sage. And grades seven and eight, third place, Aiden Ackerman for the Writer's Computer from Forest Bird Charter School. Here. Okay. So we're gonna move on to second place for working models, grades one and two, Clara. I know I'm going to mess this up. Vos, Vos das? 
Gavotis. Oh. <laughs> Puppy paw, stay still. From Hemingway. Yeah, I think I've seen you before. <laughs> All right. Sweet. <laughs> Grades three and four. We have Matthew Williams for the ski borrow from Garwood. Second place, grades five and six. Nathan Badger for the magnetic base bag stay from Siena. Okay, we'll move on to grades seven and eight. Second place. Jacob Smith and Mason Markley for Skull Shield Forest Bird Charter. Working models, first place, grades one and two. Peyton Taylor, sensory snuggles from Mullen Trail. There's some excitement. There we go. Grades three and four, India, India, rare, brar. I knew it. I had I had a 50/50 chance. <laughs> fantastic, fantastic fish feeder from Cynthia Mann. <laughs> Grades five and six. Owen Clark from, for the Kibble Minder from Christine Donnell. Donnell. Congratulations. Grades seven and eight. Alyssa Mills for Reversible Sandals, STEM Charter Academy. The best of category. Elena Van Cor for Western Winter Bridal from Forest Bird Charter School. Now we have the People's Choice winner. Well, this is voted on by all of you for 2015. It is invention number four from Joey Hike. The slide on temple sleeve from Dalton Elementary. you do any more announcements. I know you just want to get up here and do some more announcements. But I have some liquid nitrogen down here that I haven't used yet. Now, I saved this one for last. 
just because you might get a little bit wet. But that's just this first row here. You didn't know that when you sat down there, did you? Now, liquid nitrogen. The air around us is about 79. Where are you guys going? <laughs> the air around us is about 79% nitrogen. I'll put a blanket down here so I can help clean up the floor a little bit quicker. And, oh, you guys stay back behind that line there. Now, liquid nitrogen is minus 320 degrees. Like I say, the air around us is 79% nitrogen, but if you get it down really cold, it will change from a gas to a liquid. It is extremely cold. We've got to be very, very careful with it. I am going to take this liquid nitrogen here, and we're going to put a little bit in here. I'm going to set the mic down real quick while I do this. Um, safety first. I'm going to put my face shield on. Twenty degrees. So if we take this balloon that I finally got blown up before we started here and I put this in this liquid nitrogen because I've got some right here in this bowl. As I put it in there, it is getting colder and colder. All of those molecules are slowing down and as they slow down, they actually take up less space. So that balloon, we didn't let any of the air out. All we did was get it really cold. Now as that balloon warms up, it will actually reinflate Okay, because all of those molecules as they're cold, they're going to take up less space. As they heat up, they're going to take up more space, so they will expand. What we're going to do is we're going to take this 10 liters of liquid nitrogen here, and we are going to vaporize it, changing it from a liquid back to a gas instantly. And the way I'm going to do that is with some boiling hot water here. So I have about a gallon or so of boiling hot water. As I pour this into that, it is going to explode into a big cloud. You guys, please stay right there, okay? Uh, you may get a little bit wet. Even if the liquid nitrogen was to land on you, it would not hurt you because it's kind of like if you have a, um, a pan that you just take off of the stove and it is so hot, you put it under the cold water and how the cold water just bounces off of it because there's such a temperature difference. So that liquid nitrogen, like I say, it, don't worry, you know, if you do get splashed a little bit, it won't hurt you because it'll bounce right off you. Most likely, it's just going to be water that is hitting you because that liquid nitrogen is going to get vaporized. Let me put my face shield on just in case. Go back, please. Okay. Now be careful if you walk by here. There is water on the floor. We do not want anybody to slip. So please avoid this area right in here. And I'm going to go ahead and turn it back over to Beth. All righty. Boys and girls. Boys and girls, go ahead and have a seat again, if you would, back with your parents. Give Radical Rick a huge round of applause. Did the front row get wet? All right. Front row, did you survive? All right. Very nice. Ladies and gentlemen, we are headed now into the very end that Radical Rick is going to do, and that's the best of show. This is what you have been waiting for, the very best of show awards. And I'd like to mention who our sponsors are again. We have Discover Technology, Time Warner Cable, and 
A huge thank you to the University of Idaho and President Staben. They are awarding a $1,000 scholarship to the best of show winner for grades five through eight to be held until they are of college age. So all of you parents and all of you students, be thinking about the University of Idaho when you're ready for college age, okay? So the best of show, we have two, one for grades one through four, and one through one for grades five through eight. And let's give another round of applause for Radical Rick and... Thank you. You can hear that thing still cracking and popping. That's actually that boiling hot water is freezing in there. It went from boiling hot to solid ice down in there. It's about that thick of ice down in there. It's so cool. Okay, back to what you guys are here for. <laughs> Best of show, grades one through four. We have Alexander Knoll for the Ability app from North Idaho STEM Charter Academy. for providing the EV3 robotics kits in Lego education. Yes. Best of show, grades five through eight. Bryn Cullum for the warm rise floating cloud comforter. And I just asked her, it is Coulomb. I knew I mispronounced that. So Brent Coulomb. And a huge round of applause to Radical Rick. Thank you all. And the University of Idaho, Discover Technology, Time Warner Cable, and all of our sponsors and parents, young inventors, start thinking of your ideas now for next year. Thanks for joining us. Travel safely. And there's an um, ice cream social for you out in the lobby. Thank you all for coming.